Thank you. Tonight my remarks go to the path ahead. I serve my home state of Queensland made up of many different people. Some came here first, others were born here and others came here since. With the voice referendum legislation decided, the cohesion of our Queensland community is threatened with the most divisive government initiative since the Vietnam War, if not ever. Never has this country seen an issue that splits Australians right down the middle, where the vote will be won or lost on just a handful of votes in a handful of states. With the vote so close, every Australian must act with caution. Sadly, tragically, I see no sign that's going to happen. I'm deeply concerned that in the months ahead, emotion will be deliberately triggered to leverage the emotional response for votes that will continue hiding deeply troubled, absent details. There will be appeals to fear and there will be shaming on both sides. These are evident now and the campaign has not yet been called. Above all else, there will be disinformation which will occur because the Prime Minister refuses to reveal the detail of the voice. Details? I don't mean the discussion document and the Uluru Statement which are legally irrelevant to the practical application of the voice. Those documents do not form part of the vote and will not inform a legal challenge to a voice provision should one occur. I mean the legislation that will set out how the voice will work in practice. If the implementing legislation is presented before the vote, then without a doubt the High Court will hold the government to that legislation. No more, no less. Which is why the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, will not release it. The less detail revealed, the more discretion the Prime Minister will have to introduce a woke political agenda under cover of implementing the voice. An agenda that will fundamentally reshape Australian society. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the words of voice architect Professor Marsha Langdon, who only last week said, quote, People who are opposing the voice referendum are saying we are destroying the fabric of their sacred constitution. Yes, that's right, that is exactly what we are doing. End of quote. I find it difficult to reconcile the words of the architect of the voice, Professor Langdon, with the words of Prime Minister, Prime Minister Albanese, who called his proposal modest. Destroying the fabric of our nation's constitution? Modest? I thank Professor Langdon for her candour and I criticise the Prime Minister for his lack of candour, his cover up his deceit. Not that Professor Langdon spoke truthfully out of a higher regard for the fundamental principles of peaceful discourse. In fact, far from it. In 2019, Professor Langdon said, and I quote, it would be terribly unfortunate for all Australians if the debate sinks into a nasty eugenicist 19th century style of debate about the superior race versus the inferior race. End of quote. Who's doing that? Who's saying Aboriginal Australians do not deserve equal representation and do not deserve the same access to opportunity as anyone else in this country? Who's saying those on the no side desire less for Aboriginals than they do for any other Australian? No one's saying it. That's who. No one. Those words in and of themselves inject a level of vitriol that the Speaker has claimed is coming from the no side. Those comments invite hatred and violence against the no side. Those comments tell everyone who Marsha is not who we are. Labels and slurs are the refuge of the ignorant, the dishonest and the fearful. They reveal a lack of solid data, facts and logical argument. I'm concerned that the hatred we're seeing from some in the yes case will lead, must lead, in fact, to violence. I call on the Prime Minister to call off the personal attacks and restore civility to the debate coming from the yes advocates. It's a fundamental principle of One Nation that Aboriginals, together with all who are now in this country must be treated fairly and offered equality of opportunity. Anyone who seeks to minimise, to harm, to malign, to deprive those who are here first has no place in one nation. I implore all Australians to remember the golden rule of free speech, which is this. Just because you can say something does not mean you should. I implore both sides to consider your words. Consider your memes and your signs at the rallies that will no doubt occur. Consider that on the other side of this referendum, we will still be the same country composed of the same people and we will all need to get along. To use an old saying, least said, soonest mended. This advice was first seen in writing in the 1606 literary classic, Don Quixote. Ironically, like the voice, Don Quixote is a cautionary tale of a man who does not see the world as it is and rather as he needs it to be in order to justify his doomed quest to vanquish imaginary enemies for his own ego. One Nation will continue to advocate for measures that actually raise Aboriginal Australians through the provision of basic services, jobs and above all else, opportunity.